So imagine a cat walks into your clinic with some little bit of mattery discharge around its nose, but very, very severe inflammation around its eyes. What's going on here? Why is this happening? And what are the complications if we don't do anything about it? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video when we talk about chlamydia. And so let's get started. So in this case, guys, the conjunctivitis or inflammation around the eyes is most likely caused by chlamydophila felis, otherwise known as chlamydia. Now, the, the pictures that are probably going through right now are going to tell you a story. And that story is about what can happen with chlamydophila felis. And this is a bacteria that is in, considered an obligate intracellular bacteria that will infect the upper respiratory tract in cats. If you wanna learn more about the respiratory disease complex in cats, go back and check out my last two videos. The link can be found up here. Now, I personally in my practice that I work in have seen several cats that have had very severe infections of Chlamydophila felis, or at least in some of these cats, I've seen the result of a very bad infection from this bacteria. Now, in some of these cats, we've actually seen it to where they are completely blind. Sometimes the, basically the conjunctiva, which is the pink part in the inside of the eye, will actually have so much inflammation and swelling that it'll actually grow and connect to the cornea, which is the outside layer of the eye. And these are often very hard or impossible to fix without special training. And so many of these cats that develop this will end up going blind if they get to that severe of a case. So this disease is most often found in cats that are strictly outdoors or indoor outdoor, as well as in catteries. Now, a cattery is a fancy, fancy term, fancy. Now, a cattery is a fancy term for a breeding facility of cats. Often these are gonna be purebred cats, but not always. And sometimes in hoarding situations, this kind of a bacterial infection can run rampant and cause some very severe disease. So what makes this bacteria so special? This bacteria is called an obligate intracellular bacteria. And basically it means it can only reproduce within a cell of a mammal or within a cell in order to reproduce normally. So unlike bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, you know, all of the normal bacteria that we're able to culture and understand well through synthetic means. So we will put them on a plate that looks something like this. They'll grow, we can get colonies. This type of bacteria does not work that way. And so we have to do some special culturing techniques in order for us to even culture it out. So testing for it is, can be a little more complicated and testing anything about this disease can actually be more difficult because of its method of transmission and because it is an obligate intracellular bacteria. Now this type of disease you're actually probably familiar with through a dis another chlamydia, which you probably have heard of in people, and that is the most common STD in humans, is another type of chlamydia. They're separate, they are not the same thing, uh, but they can look very similar in, the, in a sense of what do they look like underneath a microscope. And that particular chlamydia is cl called Chlamydophila trachomatis, trachomode, trachomatis, trachomatis. I don't know. It's a it's species name of trachomatis. I'll put it up on the screen. I butchered the name. Just because I'm a vet doesn't mean I have perfect pronunciation by any. So what do we need to know about this disease? Well, in this case, if a cat does have it in a multi-cat household, it is going to spread very, very easily and it's going to spread through water droplets, it's going to spread through fomites, and any cells that are basically being. So what do we need to know about this disease? Well, chlamydia in cats can spread very, very easily between different cats. And so if you have multiple cats within your house, whether you just have three or four cats, two cats, or you are in a breeding situation where you are a cat breeder, your vet is most likely going to recommend treating all of the cats in the household all at the same time. And this is because if you don't, sometimes one cat can get it, recover, the next cat gets it, recovers, but then gave it back to the other cat. And so we sometimes will need to treat the whole place instead of treating them individually. And this can be extremely helpful in just getting rid of it all at once. And once you've treated it, it's very unlikely to recur within your cat population. One of the other things to note is, is that in some rare cases, this has actually been found to be zoonotic. So some people have reported that they've gotten some upper respiratory tract symptoms, or whether it be like pink eye symptoms or, you know, they got a sniffle, a cough, 
something along these lines, and it's been found to be chlamydia, and they think it's a result of the cats that have had it at the same time. So if you show any of these symptoms, your cat was diagnosed with chlamydia or has an upper respiratory tract infection, make sure you talk to your doctor and probably your vet as well. So if your cat has been diagnosed with this, like I said, we're gonna treat them probably all at once. Now the treatment of choice is doxycycline, and that's because it's one of the few types of antibiotics that can readily and consistently penetrate within that bacterial cell and also within the mammalian cells and get where it needs to go in the body. One of the other reasons that we will usually choose this antibiotic is that it is only once a day dosing instead of twice a day as some of the other antibiotics that maybe would work are. Now, note that this antibiotic therapy is not without risk. So doxycycline can be very harsh on your system and on the cat system as well. If you've ever had it, you've probably noticed that you've gotten GI symptoms. Um, if, you've ever, if you've ever used doxycycline for acne, for Lyme disease, for you know any other human infection, you'll probably know that it has really upset your stomach and your GI tract, as well as sometimes it'll cause issues with the trachea. Um, so my dad was taking doxycycline and it ended up simulating almost a heart attack because there was so much inflammation around his esophagus that it actually started affecting one of the nerves that goes to the heart. So it's not without risk. Um, and so without having a confirmed diagnosis, a lot of vets will not rush to this um, and prescribing this until other things have been tried or we've confirmed that it is chlamydia. Vaccines are somewhat controversial and many veterinarians do not recommend this as a routine vaccination. Although it is found in some of the commercially available feline distemper vaccines, and so sometimes it is very helpful, but most indoor cats are gonna have a very, very low risk of exposure, especially if it's a closed household, if there's only one cat, um, or you're not introducing cats frequently. Places where maybe this vaccine is really indicated and helpful are outdoor cats, out, indoor outdoor cats, places that are breeding where they're bringing new cats in and putting other cats out, um, or multi-cat households where there's many, many cats in the house. And in the case of our practice, we just work with so many indoor outdoor cats that we just decided as a group of doctors that we're just gonna run with the chlamydia version of this vaccine. And the reason is, is just because of, we have so many patients that this would be helpful for, we're just going to do it. Um, in some of the cases where we have maybe a single indoor only cat in an apartment, it's probably not necessary, but it's not going to hurt them either. Hopefully this video has helped you guys understand a little bit more about chlamydia felis or chlamydophila felis and has really helped you guys understand what it is, how it can affect cats and what to do if your cat is starting to show some of these symptoms. My next video is going to be on, on the feline leukemia vaccine, FELV and FIV as well. So have a fantastic rest of your day guys. We'll see you guys in the next video.